Protein powder is by far the most popular supplement in fitness, and for good reason. It's convenient, cost efficient, and provides high quality protein. But here's the problem. Most endurance athletes use protein powder in ways that actually limit recovery, blunt performance, and waste money. So. What does this science say? My name is Nicholas, I'm a sports scientist, physiotherapist, and former professional triathlete. In this video, I'll break down the four science-backed keys to getting the most out of protein as an endurance athlete. First, the best types of protein for endurance athletes. Second, the truth about timing before, during, and after training. Third, exactly how much protein you should be aiming for. And fourth, how to use it to improve your recovery and performance without sabotaging your training. By the end, you'll know how to make protein work for you and not against you. But first, let's talk about why even use protein powder in the first place. Now, contrary to what most people think, protein is not just for muscle growth. It actually has a huge impact on endurance performance. There are three key benefits of protein. The first one is recovery. You see, protein repairs muscle fibers damaged from long runs, speed work, hill allowing you to handle more training with less soreness. The second one is adaptation. Studies show that consistent protein intake improves what's called mitochondrial function. Think of mitochondria as your muscle's batteries. Consistently getting enough protein helps your body rebuild and even improve those batteries. Then your muscles can produce more energy and more efficiently so you can run faster for longer. And the final one is durability. Enough protein helps prevent injuries by strengthening connective tissue and reducing muscle breakdown during high mileage. But protein isn't just about recovery. Science has shown that it has three more amazing benefits. First, a high protein diet helps you stay full for longer, which is huge if you're trying to lose some weight to run faster. Second, heavy training blocks hammer your immune system, but protein supports immune health and lowers your risk of getting sidelined. And third, if you're cutting carbs, enough protein protects your lean mass and keeps your energy stable. So if it helps that much, what is the best type of protein for endurance athletes? When it comes to protein powders, the options can feel endless. Whey, casein, soy, pea, rice, blends. So which one is best for endurance? A big scientific review from 2025 actually found that not all proteins are created equal. What really matters is the building blocks inside protein called amino acids. And one of them in particular, called leucine, is extra special. Leucine works like an on switch for building new muscle. Once you get enough leucine in one meal, your body flips on that switch to full power. But how fast your body digests protein also matters. That's because the quicker those amino acids can get to your muscles, the faster you can start to rebuild and recover. And research consistently shows that what's called whey protein has the highest number of essential essential amino acids and the fastest absorption rate. And whey protein is rich in leucine. In fact, about 10% of it is leucine. That means if you get 30 grams of whey protein, you'll get 3 grams of leucine, which is the sweet spot for turning on the switch to building muscle. So if we want to maximize our recovery, the best choice is whey protein. But what if you're vegan? Then plant proteins like pea or soy are great options. While they're not quite as effective at stimulating protein synthesis as way, research shows that you can compensate by increasing the dose slightly or mixing different sources for a complete amino acid profile. Now, protein alone won't cut it for maximal recovery, which I'll get to in a moment. But if whey is king, does that mean that you should always take a shake after a run? Not exactly. Most runners think that a post-run shake is mandatory. In fact, back in my professional career, I would always have a protein shake ready after each practice or each training session because I thought that if I did not get that protein within 30 minutes of that training, then everything was lost. It was so bad at times that I would literally go out and train a bit more if I had forgotten to bring protein with me so that I could get it straight after I finished a workout. But fortunately, research, including a review from 2018, showed that the so-called one-hour anabolic window 
isn't as critical as we once thought, as long as you're getting enough protein throughout the day. But here's what really matters for endurance athletes. If you train fasted, taking protein before your run can boost muscle protein synthesis during exercise, leading to better recovery afterward. If you've already eaten within two to three hours before training, your shake doesn't need to be immediate. But post-workout protein is still a convenient way to spread out your protein throughout the day. And for that reason, I actually still have a protein shake after each training. I'm not that fanatic about it anymore though. But I do it because spreading your protein throughout the day is better than having it at one single meal. Now, there's one more thing to know about timing. You see, several studies suggest that about 40 grams of slow digesting protein before sleep improves overnight recovery, which is especially helpful during heavy training blocks. So even though having enough protein throughout the day is what's most important, then spreading it across that day and having some before you go to sleep can be a great strategy. But there's one more thing that runners often miss. You see, a scientific review from 2024 found that endurance athletes recover faster and adapt better when they combine protein with carbs after training. Think of it like this. Carbs refill the tank and protein repairs the engine. Together, they set you up for your next session better than just one or the other. But that begs the question. How much protein is enough protein? Think of protein like bricks for rebuilding your house. The harder the storm, the more bricks you'll need. So in general, endurance athletes need more protein than the average person. A scientific review from 2025 found that most runners eat about 1.5 grams per kilo of body weight per day. That's okay, but research shows that you'll do better if you aim for 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. And in heavy training blocks, or if you're cutting down on carbs, you can go as high as two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. That's more than the general population, but slightly less than strength athletes, leaving more room for carbohydrates or fats to fuel your workouts. But if you should spread it out across your day, then how much should you aim for in a single session? Most studies agree that around 30 grams of high quality protein per serving is enough to maximize muscle protein synthesis. Larger doses can provide some extra benefit after very demanding sessions like long runs or back-to-back -back training days. But the mistake that most runners make is either underdoing it, so only taking like 10 or 15 grams in one serving, which won't maximize recovery, or overdoing it. So having a large protein shake after your run with like 60 grams and then just not think about protein for the rest of the day. And that is not a solid strategy either. So what can it actually look like in practice? Let's say you're a 75 kilogram runner aiming for about two grams per kilogram of body weight per day. That's around 150 grams of protein in total. Here's a simple way to hit it. At breakfast, you eat some eggs, some Greek yogurt or oats with protein powder. That's 30 grams. For lunch, you get some chicken, some tofu, or a big bean bowl. Another 30 grams. Then you have a post-run shake with another 30 grams. Either whey or some plant blend. At dinner, you get some salmon, beef, or lentils with rice and add 30 grams more. And before bed, you take 30 to 40 grams of casein or cottage cheese during heavy training blocks. Spread it out like this and you'll hit your daily protein target without needing massive amounts of protein in one single sitting. Now, one of the biggest questions I get is, are protein shakes better than real food, like chicken? Quality and distribution matters more than form. Your body doesn't care if your protein comes from a shake or from a steak. What matters is the amino acids you get and how you spread it across the day. That said, protein powder can be especially helpful in certain situations, like travel when whole food isn't available, or after a long run when your appetite is low but you still need something to recover, and for consistency because it's quick, it's portable, and it's easy. I use protein shakes every single day simply because I can't hit my target without it. But remember, shakes are a supplement. They are not a replacement for a balanced diet. Use whole food first and then supplement with a shake if you need it. 
So what's the best way to use protein for endurance? Whey protein is the gold standard. Use blends or higher doses if you're plant-based. Don't stress about timing. Spread your protein across the day, get some before bed, and then pair your protein with some carbs after your training. Aim for at least 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day, potentially more, and aim for 30 to 40 grams of protein in a single sitting. But even if you nail protein, there's one supplement that most most endurance athletes overlook, and it might be more important than you think. I'll show you exactly what it is and how to use it for its maximum potential in this video right here.